our people, we're finding these, these verses in the Bible and we're connecting the dots. That's all we're doing. We're not special, but we're reading now. All I need is a reader. Bring it out, I'm the teacher. I ain't nothing. Something like that. But that's cursed in the field. See what I'm saying? You didn't get no pay. That's a curse. Thank you, brother. I'm Thank seven, you, brother. Seven My mom and dad are better than kind of people. They, I know what you're talking about. That's a curse. We're not supposed to live like that, bro. But see, now this younger generation, they don't understand this. They don't understand. That's why we are here to teach our people our history. Because what we're doing, brother, is tying the curses in the Bible back to a, a history of people so that we can understand who we are according to the Bible. So God made a covenant with his chosen people. He said, if you do what I say do, you're going to be blessed. But if you don't do what I say do, you're going to be cursed. One of those curses is to be cursed in the field and to be cursed in the city. We know we're in the ghetto. We know we're in the cotton field. We know we're in the sugar cane field, right? So now let's get another one. Let's get another one. Give me, let's, give, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 48. Because right now we're living this curse right here. We're living. I'm going to show you what I mean. Read, uh, read that. If you're going to do the Romans, chapter 28, verse 48. Bring it up. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies with the Lord shall sin against thee in hunger. It says you're going to serve your enemies that the Lord shall sin against you in hunger. Meaning if you want food to eat, guess where you got to go buy it at? You got to go buy it at the Arab store. Or you got to go down here to Mr. Brooks, your brother. We don't own no grocery stores nowhere. Right. That's a curse. That's a curse. Read on. In the thirst. And in thirst, if you want something to drink, we don't even make it. We, we don't even have bottled water. I mean, we don't have. We don't even. But we don't. We gotta buy water. That's right. something that God put down here for everybody, for every man. He sent rain from the sky. You know they passed laws that say you can't collect rainwater in some states. They don't even want you to get your own water without going through them. Curse. I mean, you must go to them for food, water. You know. And then nakedness. And in nakedness, you know what that means? You gotta go to them to buy clothes. You gotta go to them to buy clothes. We don't manufacture no clothes. We don't have no manufactured tent that produce cotton fabric or silk fabric or none of that stuff. We gotta go and buy our clothes from somebody else. That's a curse. That's a curse, my brother. See what I'm saying? Curse shall you be. You must go to them for food, clothing, and shelter. Anybody that can't provide themselves food and clothing, you're living under a curse. God said his chosen people would be put under a curse for breaking his laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. What happened? What happened was when, they, when you got on them slave ships, for 400 years you worked with them for free. By the time you came out of that, you were a broken people. You had no more idea of what your true nationality was. Right. Go get some more. Watch this. Watch this. Read. In the want of all things. In the want of all things. Read on. And, it, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Give me the one with the yoke of iron. What the one with the yoke of iron? Is that the one with the yoke of iron? See the yoke of iron around his neck and say, he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. You Google that. You Google that. There's no other people in the world that had yokes of iron put on their neck like your ancestors did. This is the Bible is a true book. He say, I'm going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Now watch this. Here's the most important part of the scripture. Read on. Until he had destroyed thee. Until you were destroyed. Until your ancestors were destroyed. Until your ancestors start telling you that you ain't nothing but a nigga. Until your ancestors start believing that they were Negro. Until your ancestors start believing that they were colored. That's a destroyer. God never called. I can't find Negro in this Bible. I can't find a, a, a colored or black in this Bible. You were destroyed. You had no more clue as to who you were as a people. But that's what we are here to do. We're up here now. We're teaching our people. We're finding these, these verses in the Bible and we're connecting the dots. That's all we're doing. We're not special, but we're reading now. The Bible has been taught to us wrong. And now we read and we collect the dots for ourselves and we say, well, God said this is going to happen to his chosen people. Who that happened to? Oh, that happened to my ancestors. Whoa, wait a minute. Does that mean I'm God's chosen people? But there's more. Watch this. Let's jump to uh, 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 verse 6-8. Now here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Most of our people understand 
that our ancestors came over here on cargo slave ships, right? Most of our people understand. Do you understand that, young man? Because they don't teach this in high school no more. You never heard that before. See there? That's the disservice, my brother, that they're doing to the young people. They're not teaching their history. Everybody our age know that our ancestors came over here on how? On cargo slave ships. And it's a shame that this young brother go to school, been going to school all his life, and never heard that. They don't want him to know because then he might connect the dots and understand that he ain't no Negro. That he's the Israelite of the Bible. That's watch this, right. watch this. Now here we go. This is one of the another one of the curses that Moses told his children, his people that were wandering around in the desert after they had been delivered out of Egypt. He said, this is one of the curses that's going to happen to you. Read. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He says, and the Lord shall bring you in Egypt again. Now, I don't want you to get confused with that word Egypt. Because Egypt is not does not mean that land over there. Egypt means house of bondage. That land back in the old time was called the, uh, the land of Mizraim. But Egypt actually means the land of bondage. That's what the Bible calls it, right? Back in the day, it was called Mizraim. But right here, just for time's sake, I just want you to understand that Egypt means I'm going to bring you back into bondage. So when the Lord says, I will bring you back into Egypt, he's saying I'm going to bring you back into bondage again. So again, we're talking about a future tense. Read. No, no. Okay. And the Lord shall bring thee to Egypt again. With ships, but he said, I'm going to bring you back into bondage, but this time I'm going to do it with ships. Now, here's what you got to understand, brother. When we came out of Egypt the first time, how did we come out, sir? We walked out of Egypt the first time. Remember how the Lord split the Red Sea and we walked out and then he drowned all the Egyptian soldiers in the Red Sea? Yeah. We walked out the first time, but the Lord said, this time I'm going to do it with ships. <laughs> Read on. By the way, whereof I speak unto thee. He said, Moses is saying, I'm going to do it just like I'm telling you I'm going to do it. I'm going to take you back into bondage on ships. Read on. That thou shalt see it no more again. He said, you're not going to see your homeland no more. You're not going to see it no more. So when they put us on those cargo slave ships, have we ever gone back? No, we've never gone back. So that's another clue who he's talking to. He put us on cargo slave ships and he said, you're not going to see it no more again. Now I'm going to throw, I'm gonna, I ain't going to hit you with this right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep reading. Let's read on. And there you shall be sold to your enemies. Now I want you to take note. I want you to really stop and focus on what was just said. He said, I'm going to put you on these cargo slave ships, right? He said, and then when you get off of them cargo slave ships, there you will be sold unto your enemies. All right, all right. Now here's, here's the time. Now I'm going to ask you something right now because our people have a hard time processing this. I don't know why it is, but that's that cloud that we are under. So he says, when you get off of those cargo slave ships, there you will be sold unto your enemies. Who bought you when you got off them cargo slave ships? What did the Bible just call it? No, read it again. See, that's what I'm telling you. I don't know why all people can't process this. This is really easy. This is elementary. Read it. I'm going to have him read it again for you, young man. Watch this. Read. In there, you shall be sold unto your enemies. Read it again. I'm going to read, read, read the rest of it. For bond men and bond women. So he says, there, when you get off of them cargo slave ships, you will be sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women, or slave men and slave women. But the question I'm asking you is who bought you when you got off of them cargo slave ships? Right. You got that part right the first time. What you saying, sir? Yeah, white man. The white man bought us when we got off the slave ships. Right. But what did the Bible just call them? What did the Bible just call them? See, this, this is bad, bro. This is bad. This is what we're fighting out here with our people. It's a fight. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. I'm going to ask it for you because I know we might be finishing up pretty soon. The Bible just said you will be sold unto your enemy. The man that bought you when you got off them slave ships was the so-called white man. But the Bible just said he's your enemy. Right. You see, I didn't, but look, bro, I didn't say that. Did I say that? Are those my words? Or are we reading out the Bible? 
We're reading out what the Bible says. Yes, so now we're not telling you to take up guns and nothing like that, but you need to understand that you have enemies and not everybody here is for your good. Yes, because man. what they know and what you're finding out today is that the secret to your power is to come back and keep God's laws. Because God say, if you keep my laws, things are going to be good for you. But if you break my laws, all these curses are going to come up on you and overtake you. What do you think we did? We're living under the curses right now. So we didn't keep God's laws. So what we got to do to get our power back? Got to follow the book. We got to follow the book. We got to start keeping God's laws. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.